Tanjama City was being stoned all day. People completely forgot about the storm, the rain, and the damage caused by them. Rumors such as, the valiant Viridi warrior and the hardy prince of the Chola nation, Pani Selvar, had appeared at Nagaipatnam on the day of the storm, then he was coming towards Tanjavur, and a large number of people were constantly coming with the intention of mounting him on a lion and crowning him as emperor. Later, those who had seen the prince in person at Nagaipatnam came and said, Due to this news, a storm of inspiration began to blow inside the Tanjore city temple, just like the storm outside two days ago. The people of Tanjore decided to give the prince a grand welcome the likes of which the city had never seen before. They began to decorate the streets of the suburbs outside the fort. They stood in the streets in large numbers and talked. Instruments such as tambourines, tambourines etc. were collected. Those who excelled in dance songs prepared to show all their energies on this special occasion. Mandars and youths thought about ways to adorn themselves. And a number of hurried men, intending to precede themselves in welcoming the prince, began to wait a short distance in advance on the roads leading from Tanjore in all directions. Some others looked at those who had left earlier. They began to decorate the streets of the suburbs outside the fort. They stood in the streets in large numbers and talked. Instruments such as tambourines, tambourines etc. were collected. Those who excelled in dance songs prepared to show all their energies on this special occasion. Mandars and youths thought about ways to adorn themselves. And a number of hurried men, intending to precede themselves in welcoming the prince, began to wait a short distance in advance on the roads leading from Tanjore in all directions. Some others looked at those who had left earlier. They began to decorate the streets of the suburbs outside the fort. They stood in the streets in large numbers and talked. Instruments such as tambourines, tambourines etc. were collected. Those who excelled in dance songs prepared to show all their energies on this special occasion. Mandars and youths thought about ways to adorn themselves. And a number of hurried men, intending to precede themselves in welcoming the prince, began to wait a short distance in advance on the roads leading from Tanjore in all directions. Some others looked at those who had left earlier. Instruments such as mats were collected. Those who excelled in dance songs prepared to show all their energies on this special occasion. Mandars and youths thought about ways to adorn themselves. And a number of hurried men, intending to precede themselves in welcoming the prince, began to wait a short distance in advance on the roads leading from Tanjore in all directions. Some others looked at those who had left earlier. Instruments such as mats were collected. Those who excelled in dance songs prepared to show all their energies on this special occasion. Mandars and youths thought about ways to adorn themselves. And a number of hurried men, intending to precede themselves in welcoming the prince, began to wait a short distance in advance on the roads leading from Tanjore in all directions. Some others looked at those who had left earlier. And a number of hurried men, intending to precede themselves in welcoming the prince, began to wait a short distance in advance on the roads leading from Tanjore in all directions. Some others looked at those who had left earlier. And a number of hurried men, intending to precede themselves in welcoming the prince, began to wait a short distance in advance on the roads leading from Tanjore in all directions. Some others looked at those who had left earlier. If the suburbs were struggling, there were soon signs that something important was in store within the fort. In the morning the gate of the fort was opened as usual. Vendors of curry, curd, buttermilk and people going to the palaces for business were entering the fort as usual. Only a few people came today to complain about the damage caused by the storm rain. They also went into the fort. As usual, the Veleka army also entered the fort. Later, all the gates of the fort were slammed shut. The sound of the doors being tightened with large iron bars and the sound of the locks being locked began to be heard. Those who arrived later were stopped by the guards. Another miracle happened in the early morning when the people started talking about the reason behind this kind of banging on the fort gates. A bridge to cross the moat surrounding the fort was also lifted. After that no one could approach the fort gate. Those who were near the north gate, the main gate of the fort, inquired about the west gate and the south gate. They were astonished to find that those gates, like the northern gate, 
were barred and the bridges thrown away. What is this? Is there no war? Do not the armies of the enemy appear to be advancing? Are there no enemies strong enough to invade north, south, west, east, anywhere in the immediate area? So perhaps the enemy is coming from the double zone in the north in a sudden rush, crossing the Kaladam and the Kaveri and other rivers. How can it come now? The floods are in full flow, aren't they? The people who lived in the outer city of Tanjore Fort talked like this. Perhaps all these preparations are being made to prevent Pawnee from entering the Selvara Fort, and some people asked questions and replied, it must be so. As the rumor spread, Nagarmandar's motivation was high. Who are these Palyavatarayas to prevent a prince who came by way of the Vijayalaya Chola dynasty from entering the fort? If such Palyavatarayas are really trying, then the walls of the fort should be demolished. There were those who spoke in the posture. Rumor has it that how the Maya goblin leaves and travels so quickly is a mysterious thing that no one can figure out. Suddenly another terrible rumor started spreading among the people. The long-awaited death of Sundara Chola Charkavarthi has happened. Is the emperor dead? Is that true? They asked first. Early that morning, some people who saw the comet flash like a torch for a minute and then fall towards the earth and disappear, took that as a proof and confirmed the death of Sundara Chola. If this is true, what's going to happen upstairs? Isn't it natural that it is discussed with concern? Will there be disputes over royal ownership? Will the minor powers split into two factions and fight? Will the Chola Empire crumble due to such internal strife? Will the armies of enemies once again invade the empire that has thrived and grown for a hundred years? While the people were talking like this, there comes the army. A cry arose. Many ran around and looked. They looked up at tall buildings and tall trees. The sight of the onlookers was at once astonishing and bewildering. At that time there were three major roads leading west and southwest from Tanjore. One is the road to Rameswaram via Kajumbalur, another was the road to the southern country through Madurai, another was the long and wide road that went to Karur and Charanatha via Vrayur. By that afternoon, troops were marching through the three roads mentioned above. The ranks ahead of them were visible, but not where the ranks behind them ended. So the army soldiers kept coming back to back. Fortunately, there was no room for suspicion of enemy forces as large tiger flags were flying in front of the troops. They are the armies of the Chola Empire. But why come? Where do they come from? A little closer, when the troops came closer, the symbols on the flags bearing the image of a tiger were also seen. From them, it was revealed that the great army of Parantaka Chola under the leadership of Kajumbalur, the great army of Kaikalar known from the southern country, and the great army of Aranjaya Chola who were involved in the Elam War were coming together. In a little while, it became known to the Mandars of Tanjore that Bhutavikrama Kesari, the commander of the southern army, was coming with the above forces. From this, it is easy to guess and feel what the forces are coming for. Bhutavikrama Kesari, a big farmer of Kajumbalur, married Vanati, the daughter of a small farm worker in Elam, to Pani's lover. It was a known news in the Chola country that he wanted to install him on the throne of the Chola country. The arrival of Prince Arulmas Hivarma from the east to the cheers of the common people, and the simultaneous arrival of Sinadipati Bhutavikrama Kesari from the west towards Tanjavur with a huge army, coincided with each other. The people already knew that the Palyavatarayas and the minor princes who were friends with them were trying to dethrone Madhurand Hagar. Therefore, the people of Tanjavur speculated that Buddhavikrama Kesari of Kajumbalar is coming with his huge southern forces to enshrine Selvara, the auspicious auspicious for their love. Thus, their enthusiasm began to flow further. They were ready to welcome and entertain all the soldiers who were raging like an ocean. Tanjore had many inns run by large trading groups at that time. Preparations were underway to feed thousands of people in the inns run by the trade groups of Kajumbalar Manakramathar, Tirapurambayam Valankiyar, Akalayurth Dharma Merchant and Nanadi Satishai Arata 500. On learning this, the gaiety of the townspeople increased. They were wandering around and talking together. 
since 100% of them belonged to Aromas Hivarmar's party, they did not consider it necessary to hide anything in talking about the events to come. When the soldiers approached Tanjore and started pitching their tents and camps, the townspeople went to those camps and started chatting with the soldiers. By the time the sun had set and it was well dark, the army soldiers had surrounded the three sides of the city of Tanjore. On the fourth side, it was not convenient for the soldiers to go to that side, as it approached the fort of Tanjore to the north, and there was a great flood on the north side. They considered it unnecessary and left it. We have seen the main northern gate of Tanjore Fort before, haven't we? Was it the gate through which Nandini Devi first entered the fort of Vandiyathevan? The Jaga of General Bhutavikrama Kesari was erected at a place visible from its fort gate. After dark, the commander looked around the fort and arrived at his post. About a hundred people had arrived there before him. Among them were Velir chieftains, Kaikalar chieftains, chieftains of the Pandya region, and chieftains of the Kangu nation. There were many leaders of the Chola forces who were victorious in the Elam War. Apart from these, there were many leaders of trade Mahasavas, chiefly the leaders of the world-renowned trade zone known as Nanadi Satishi 1500. They were great merchants who traded ships with foreign countries. They could afford to send their own warships to guard ships carrying trade goods. Apart from them, Aimpirang group from Tanjavur City.